Daf Kuf Mem Ches Med Aleph right at the top. Rabba Bar Brachana Ikul Pumdisa. Rabba Brachana went from Eretz Yisrael to Pumdisa. Loy Aleph Berke Dr. Yehuda, and he didn't go to Rav Yehuda Shir. Shadr La Adar Daila Adar Daila. Rav Yehuda sent his Shamas Adar Daila to Adar to bring him Omrale Zil Garbe, and he told him that he should take his garment, he should take his cloak as a mashkin until they make sure that he comes. Azal Garbe, so that's what he did. Also, Ashkei the Kadorish, so Rabbi Rochana came and her story that Rabbi Yehuda was Darshanim, Ein Magzirin as a Shever, that he can't set the broken bone on Shabbos. Omer he said, Hachi Amar Rav Chana Bagtar Mershmol, Halacha Magzirin as a Shever. But he said that Rav Chana Bagta said the name Shmuel that you could set the bone. It's considered to be a a makish alchal. It's considered to be a sakana. So you could. So he said that Allah has machzir as a shever. Amalei Rav Yehuda said, "How Chana di Don? Chana is here. Lives here. But how Shmuel di Don? And Shmuel also is here in Bava. Veloy Shmueli. And I haven't heard it, even though they're here. Veloy Bedina Gavatir." And wasn't it right for me to take your, your garment as a mashkin to make sure you come? If you have, if I hadn't made sure that you, you came, we would be missing out this halacha. Mish and Nifrika Yara the Mishnah says that if someone's hand or foot became dislocated, he can't massage it in cold water. He can bathe in the normal manner, but he can't actively massage it. Ravavi Avi also becomes Rav Yesim. He was once before Rav Yosef, Shani Le Yodek. His hand became dislocated. So, Omer Le Hachamai, are you allowed to? So, he demonstrated a certain movement with the hand. Are you allowed to do this, this type of movement? Are you allowed to massage it in this way? So, he said also, Vahachamai, and what about doing it in another manner? Is this way of doing it? So, he, he didn't actually actively massage it, he just made a demonstration of doing it. He didn't continue to do it, massage it, but he just. Demonstrate, can I do this? Can I do that? In the meantime, his hand, <coughs> it got uh, uh, it got cured, got healed. So, Omrele, mighty boy, look. So, you ask him, why Why would you ask me this question? What was your shyla? It shouldn't be a dover pasha that it's also, that these types of massages are also to do. Now again, it means they're also to do it if you do it in a continual way, and if you repeat it, not that just if you do it once. He did it once as a demonstration. Each one was just as a demonstration. But he asks, isn't it our Pasha that this is also we learned in the Mishnah, Mishnah Nifika Yara Raglo Yitfimbitsaina? If a person's hand or foot became dislocated, he can't massage it in cold water. He can bathe in a normal manner. If it happens to get cured through the water, then then it's okay. But he can't actively massage it. So what's your shine? But we also it says in the Mishnah that you can't set a broken bone. And Vomar Bhana Bhaktana Shmu Allah Khmarzira Sashara and they say notwithstanding it's considered Sakana and you can't set the broken bone. So maybe here also that would be the case. Omarle, Kula Bhana Mahisa Maksina, you weave all of this in the Mishnah with the weaving in the same weave, meaning Hechaditmar Yitmar, Hechad Loyitmar Loyitmar. Where we said there's an exception, the fairish that there's an exception, then that's that's what's stated. But if it's not stated the fairish, then it's not. So just because in one case there's an exception, but in the case of the broken bone there's an exception, should not lead you to assume that there is an exception in the other halachas in the Mishnah. And therefore, it's clearly that it's also. New parak, parak shoyal. Shoyal adam mechavera kada yaim lekadi shemen obelvach lo yaim eloi halveni. A person can borrow pitchers of wine or oil from his friend, but can't use a lotion of halveni, then a lotion of, which is used by loans. So the Rishonim speak out and Ramazbir that in general terms, there's an Isra to use the uh, Rishonim even speaking in business terms on Shabbos. So items that are terminology that uh, is used in the conduct of business, and therefore certain Rishonim are also to use. They were matir for the purpose of Shabbos. They were matir to an extent to use some of these uh, terminologies. 
But they were makbid, and in a case where there's a chashash, where the person might come to write down the loan, uh, and it might come, uh, come to be written down to remind the person of the loan, they asserted a certain lotion. So therefore, if a person is borrowing pitchers of wine or from his friend, he's allowed to, but he can't use the lotion of Halvani. He can use the lotion of She'ela, but not Halvani. A woman who's borrowing loaves from a friend, loaves of bread, similarly. But if the lender doesn't trust and he can't write down the loan and he doesn't have uh, trust that the person will repay, then he can take a mashkin, he can, uh, the borrower leaves his talus over there as a mashkin. As Rishwain speak out, that however, you, can't, you cannot say that this is being taken as a mashkin because that is a terminology that's used in business. So you can't say that this is, I'm taking this as a mashkin, or I'm giving this as a mashkin. And after Shabbos, you make a cheshman, what was the value of the wine or the oil or the bread, and it's paid back either with, with the item itself or with money. And if Erev Pesach is on Shabbos, it's in Yerushalayim. The people have to be makri the korban pesach. If a person forgot to buy the animal, or he did not pay to become part of a chabura, and now he is now he has to be his shabbat b'tzer pesach. He needs the behemoth for the korban pesach. Maniach tela talisa etzloi. He leaves his talis with the seller, but not less pisloi, and then he takes the the behemoth for the korban pesach. Vaisim achesh ben lachar yontav. And he makes a cheshman after Yontif, uh, so he, uh, Shabbos, he, he, can't, he, um, he can't buy it. Next day, Sunday, is Yontif. And after Yontif, he makes a cheshman of what the value of the animal was, and, and they, he repays it. Dr. Gemara, Amalei Rava, Barbara Khanala, Baye Maishna, Eshelena Maishna, Helveni. What's the difference in the terminology between She'ela and Alvo? They both imply the same thing, it's borrowing. So what's the difference between the two? Why do we say that She'ela is mutter, but the lotion of Halva is also? If he says She'ela, the person will come to write it down. Halveni also lamechta, but if he uses the lotion of Halveni, he'll come to write it down. So Rashi explains that Halva, some Halva is for 30 days, and therefore it might come to be written down. She'ela is not for a, a 30 day period necessarily. So it's understood that She'ela is that the uh, lender can ask for repayment earlier. It's normally not done for a long term on a long term basis. She'ela, a person borrows a cup of sugar from the neighbor, a person borrows a loaf of bread. It's understood that it's pay will be paid back uh, in a shorter period of time if they use a lotion of She'ela, of a lotion of She'ela rather than Halvo. Now, normally in the terminology itself, she'ela applies, when we say she'ela, it means the item itself. Uh, when you, you, borrow, um, you borrow a car, so you're borrowing and returning the car. When you have is a loan, you're borrowing money, you're not paying back the same money, the same uh, coins or the same bills. You're paying back money, the same uh, amount of money that was borrowed, but not the same item. But over here, when we say have these languages, we don't refer to the item itself. A person is borrowing a yayin or shaman or a bread or a korban pesach or an animal. They're not returning the same item. But the lotion of she'ela is the implication is normally something which is done on a shorter term period because normally she'ela is you're borrowing and returning the very same item. So you don't want to give that item for a long period of time. Normally, a you know, person borrows a car, for, for instance, he borrows it for whatever it is, a day or two, unless stipulated. Otherwise, it's normally a short period of time. Otherwise, it gets ruined. The person, the owner needs the, the use of the item. Halvo, stam halvo for 30 days. That's why uh, halvo, a person normally, when he uses a lotion of halvo, we come to write it down, but not she'ela. Taisus uh, argues with Rashi, and Taisus says that some she'ela is also for 30 days. So he says, that's not the chilak. Taisa says that the chilak is, is that since she'ela is normally, 
is you're borrowing and returning the very same item and halva normally is a loan where you're not returning the item you're returning the amount of money but it's not the very same item and therefore in uh, halva is normally written down and shayla is not because shayla you're returning that same item halva you write down the amount of money that was borrowed so you write it down to have a record of it. But Shayla normally is not. Now, even though we're here in this case, we're not talking where he's returning the very same item. Nevertheless, since you use a lotion of Shayla, which a person normally doesn't write down by Shayla and not Halva, therefore the person won't come to write it down since you're using the terminology, which normally a person does not write that down. <clears throat> the Rishonim speak out, the Rashba and the Ran, they speak out, that this is only in languages where there is a chiluk. In Lashon HaKadosh, there's a chiluk, Shela and Halva. But let's say in English, when you borrow something, you borrow something, we don't really have this chiluk, whether it's borrowed is the, the item in, in itself is returned or the, the uh, dollar value is returned. We don't really have this chiluk between Halva and between Shela. When you borrow a car or you borrow um, a sum of money, you use the same language. So they say, as the Rishonim say, the, the Rosh Belaran, they say that, therefore, in these types of languages, you have to say tainly. You have to say tain. You don't use a lotion of ha borrowing, uh, which could uh, indicate this type of transaction. You say tainly. Let's see, right to the Gemara and break the Gemara. Va cave in the Bacholz in the boy Lememer Le Halvani, Vomale Hashielani. Yeah, but the Frank the Gemara people aren't always so particular in the language that they use. So sometimes a person really, it's a halvo, and he says Hashielani. Veloy Kapitala, and the lender is not Makbid, and he allows him to keep it for a longer period of time. So Vasilamechta. And then he would come to write it down. So in the, during the week, sometimes a person, for instance, would borrow a sum of money, and he says, "Ashilani, a thousand dollars," instead of "Alveni." And the lender knows that what he means is that he wants a loan, and he wants a loan for a period of time, and he lets him keep it, and he doesn't demand repayment immediately. So they might come to write it down. Shabbos, why don't we have the same concern? Amr he answered, he says, Behold, On the weekdays where a person is not particular, and he doesn't have to be particular, so we're not makpid. And the lender realizes that even though he used a lotion of she'ila, for instance, he really meant halva, and he doesn't demand payment immediately. But Shabbos came and they shalene who the shorele rabbana. Halvene le shorele. But on Shabbos, since it's only the shayla, he must use the lotion of shell and not halva. Min kor mils will also la mechta. So there's a hacker. There's a hacker. So when he uses the lotion of shayla, he won't come to write it down. He knows, he realizes that they have to use a particular lotion. Why do you have to say she'ela not halva so that you won't come to write it down? So that itself is a reminder. Amr le rabba barra barra fana la baya. Amr rabbana kol mil di yante kamadav shalishnu yimashanina. On yante, we allow you to do things, but we want you to make, there should be a heck here, and you should realize that you're, it's yante and not get carried away. So honey, now she the malin chav sayamaya. So the women that fill up buckets with water, they draw water in their buckets. My time aloy mashaninan. Why don't they have to make a shinoi when they bring the water and carry it and bring it in a different way? He answered, "Baba, answer mishum delay answer because you can't." Hey, chilav de. What should they do? If the malin bechas raba, if you say that they have a big bucket. And you should tell make a shini and tell them limlo bechatsa zuta and tell them to use the smaller buckets. So if you want to tell them to make a shini, don't use the big bucket, use smaller buckets. Hakamav should be lucha, but that will cause them to make more trips. So yes, they'll have a lighter bucket. It won't be so heavy, and it'll be a hacker that for covered yantiv and it's not over the home. But on the other hand, they'll have to go back and forth more often. So there's more of a tircha and going back and forth. 
the Malia Bachatsa Zuta Limla Bachatsa Raba, if normally they use small buckets. And now, if we suggest to them that they should use a large bucket, Kamasha Vimasa, it'll increase the weight of it and it'll be a bigger tircha for because they'll have to carry a heavier item. Nifra Sudra, if you should say that we should put a Sudra, put a, a kerchief on top of it, also in it might get wet and might have to squeeze it out. Nechasya bin if you say cover it with a lid, so they do use that type of shinoi, zimnum de misik, vatlam mikdre. Sometimes the rope that's tying the lid down will break, and then they'll come and retie it, and they'll be over and being big kaisher kesher, the malacha of kshira. Hilkach lo yasher. Therefore, it's not practical to make a shinoi that will be meaningful, that won't involve other problems and potentially other malachas. So therefore, we don't, in this case, we, we leave it as it is.